Hey guys, what's up? Hope everybody's doing good today. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. And today we're going to get back to fishing tips. I know the last couple of days we've been talking a lot about uh, industry stuff, but we're going to get back to some hardcore hogging tips here. And today's topic is one of my favorite topics, and that's jigs, whether you should use rattles or not use rattles. And I'm sort of going to give you guys a little seminar, a little discussion on what my experiences have been with them over the years and sort of uh, maybe give you a foundation or some guidelines. You know, when, back when we started fishing jigs a lot, back in the, the late 1970s, early 1980s, there, there were no rattles in jigs. They didn't start coming out until, I believe it was the late 1980s, a company called Alron, uh, no, yeah, it was, no, Alron had the, the original flipping jig, but after that, the, the company called Lunker Lure came out with the rattleback jig. And then they came out with the triple rattleback jig. And uh, I had the opportunity to be sponsored by Lunker Lure for many years. So I got real familiar with the products and the rattles in it. And I'm sort of gonna give you some guidelines on when you should use rattles and not. So anyway, here's the, the three jigs that I use primarily for pitching and flipping. And what, that's what we're talking today about are pitching and flipping jigs with rattles in it. Um, like I said, I'm not sponsored by any jig company, so these are jigs that I buy just like you guys. Um, you can get all these on Tackle Warehouse. Um, I'll include the Fish in a Moment Tackle Warehouse link if you guys would like to order some. But the three type of jigs that I use are the original Lunker Lure Rattleback Jig. Um, this is just, this is a three quarter ounce size. It's got a single rattle chamber in it right here. Um, it's got a it's fairly, you can hear that, it's a fairly subtle rattle on the thing. Um, and then the way it's affixed here is you can either hook your trailer on like a pork frog or you can thread it up on there like that. So that's the, this is the one that um, I've used for years. The next one is the Lunker Lure Triple Rattleback Jig. And this one actually has three different rattle chambers and you can hear quite a bit different sound on it. It's quite a bit noisier and you don't have to move it quite as much to get the rattle out of it. And this right here, this is a Cumberland Lures AW jig without a rattle on it. And this is, this is one of my favorite jigs here too, when I don't want to rattle. So let's talk a little bit about when and, and why you want to use rattles. First of all, when you're pitching and flipping, a lot of it has to do, uh, as far as the sound that I want out of the jig, it has to do with the water depth, the water clarity, and the type of cover that I'm fishing and the personality and the mood of the fish a little bit. If I'm fishing a situation where, um, you know, the fish are sort of highly pressured, um, the water is pretty clear, and uh, the fish, I just feel that they're a little bit spookier, that's when I'll go to the jig without a rattle on it. Because in the clear water, I'm really focusing more on the sight aspect of the jig. So a lot of times, when you're dealing with finicky fish in clear water, and when I'm talking about clear water, I'm talking about water visibility over four feet. Clear water pitching and flipping situations, and it can be either a flooded situation or just docks or lay downs or whatever. But these fish, these bass, they will study a jig real close. And sometimes when they're studying a jig by sight, you don't want any type of external noise to take away from something that may spook them. And a lot of times I found out in clear water that that works. Also, another time that I don't use rattles is usually after like a bad front. If you've got one of those cold fronts that come through that push through with strong north winds, uh, bluebird skies, that type of stuff, those fish are finicky and I find out that they don't really like a rattle too much. So my non-rattle and jigs, the AW Cumberland Lures jig, you know, it's for tough conditions, clear water, that type of deal, regardless of the cover. Now, the next one is out, <laughs> just out there playing with his toy boat and truck. He's a little frustrated. The next one I use is, this is my workout horse. This is just the Lunker Lure straight rattleback jig. It's got, a, it's got a real subtle rattle on it. You can hear right there, pretty subtle on there. And the, the way that, I, the reason I like this particular jig is that I can make it sort of as noisy as I want to make it. If I'm fishing my jig real slow and pulling it, it's not really making much noise on there. But if I get the jig where I'm pitching it like into a bush or over a limb where the, where the jig is hanging vertical over a piece of cover, I can sit there and just shake that jig and pump it like that. And it just makes real little subtle noise, almost like 
maybe how a crawdad would make if it's flapping its, uh, you know, uh, tail against the rocks or, or moving rocks around. That's sort of like the noise it'll make. And that's something that doesn't sound like much to you and I, but underwater, that's really uh, magnified quite a bit. So in typical flipping situations where I've got anywhere water visibility between, you know, six inches to six feet, anything like that, um, normal weather conditions, fish are just in a normal personality, normal mood. They're not finicky. They're not super aggressive. They're just normal fishing conditions. This is the jig that I use. And this is the one that I use most of the time. Subtle rattle in it. Definitely like the rattle. Now, times that I'm fishing extremely heavy cover, say, say I'm flipping those real gnarly type flooded bushes, like the mesquite bushes, the ones that have millions of limbs on it and they're just super, super dense. Or if I'm flipping like some type of grass bed, some type of hydrilla or shallow millpool, thick, thick cover, that's when I go to the triple rattleback jig. You know, it's a lot noisier. You know, it's three times as noisy as a regular one. And if I'm fishing that super thick cover, regardless, uh, you know, of the water clarity that much, if the, if the cover is super thick where those fish have a hard time honing in on something, because even if the water visibility is six or eight feet, if you're in one of those gnarly, you know, buckbrush mesquite bushes, they can't really get a good visual on there, but they can track this thing by the noise. And if you pitch it in a bush, it'll, these fish may come five or six feet away to investigate the noise on it. And if you're in heavy cover, and even if it's clear water, and even if the fish are spooky a little bit, they don't have time to analyze or study it as good. They just, they're not in position to do that. So the triple rattleback, the super loud one, is basically in a situation where I need to pull the fish into me from a long distance away. Um, and that's why it works really good around grass beds. You know, that triple rattleback jig, anytime I'm flipping millpool or hydrill that's in like five feet of water or less, um, and there's lots of it, lots of grass, this is, that's the number one jig that I found. And it'll definitely get you more bites on it. But another thing you want to remember about rattling jigs is take advantage of the rattle by shaking the rod tip in one position. And the, and the way that you have to do this is like when you're pitching and flipping over whatever cover it is, you know, docks, lay downs, bushes, whatever, that type of stuff. When you pitch your bait in there, make sure that that bait goes over something where that, where that jig is hanging vertical, but make sure that it's set up where if you anticipate anticipate or you get a bite, you're still going to be able to get that fish out of there. You don't want to like, you know, pitch it into like a V right there where it's going to get caught in that V. If you've got just a straight overhanging limb like that, then that's good. But the, the, the advantage and the reason I will always want to pitch over a limb is I can sit there and I can just shake it. Sometimes I'll shake it for up to 30, 40 seconds in one spot if I got the fish really pinpointed and zeroed in on a certain location. And like I said, again, if you have the thick cover and if you've got dirty water, sometimes that can really help out a lot. But I've never, I've never really seen a situation where, um, you know, they won't hit a rattling jig under normal conditions. The only time that I have not done well on a rattling jig and I've noticed a, a significant difference if I'm fishing that super clear water Again, the water visibility is over six feet. Um, I'll use an example of a, of a Central Pro-Am tournament I won on Beaver Lake um, several years ago. This was a May tournament, Beaver Lake, super clear water. The water was really high and I was flipping a jig with the Lunker Lure Rattleback jig. And uh, first day of the tournament, you know, I did pretty good. I started catching quite a few fish on there. Wind was blowing a little bit. You know, I was making long pitches into these bushes with the rattleback. And I, I was catching them, but the second day the wind died off and it was just like completely flat, slick, clear water. And um, I could see these fish swimming down there. I could see when I was working through the bushes, I could see them swimming through the bushes. And what I did on that is I was using a, uh, the big salty chunk, you know, the big salty chunk trailer. I downsized to a super chunk junior smaller and I took the rattle off. I just, I just broke the rattle off of it to make it quieter and wound up catching a bigger limit than I did the day one and wind up winning the tournament um, with that adjustment. I just felt like they didn't want the rattle. They were spooked by that in the clear water with not much wind. 
So, you know, a lot of it is just you, you have to let the fish tell you what they want. But anyway, guys, that's my basic guidelines just to go over it once again. Uh, clear water, post front, you know, finicky fish, you know, go without the rattle when the fish are studying that bait. And then the rattling jigs, uh, the various rattles that you use, some are louder than others, but let that dictate the type of cover you're fishing. The thicker the cover and the more vast the cover is where you have to draw those fish in, go with a louder rattle and a more of a subtle rattle if you're pinpointing specific targets like laydowns or bushes. And I think it'll help you out. And like I said, it's just another one of those factors. When you're talking about jig fishing, you've got dozens of variables and the sound is just one variable along with the profile and the color and how you work it. But the key is, is you want to, you want to control and hit on all those positive strike attractors that you possibly can uh, and get rid of the negative ones. And rattle situations are, are one of those that can be either or depending upon the situation. So anyway, that's today's tip guys. Uh, give it a try. I think it'll help you catch a few more bass. Uh, thanks again for tuning into the channel. Much appreciated. Uh, we still got 60% of you dudes out there that aren't subscribing to the channel. So if you like the tips that I'm giving you, just please hit that subscribe button here. Uh, much appreciated. You can unsubscribe at any time. And um, like I said, if I say something that irritates you or make you mad, you can unsubscribe. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll be back tomorrow with another one.